no. I was expecting a giant car. Come here! Welcome back Autobots, Decepticons, and everything in between to another episode of Fixing Transformers. And in today's episode, we're going to take a look at what happened to the Dinobots and Transformers of last night. But before we jump into that, a quick word from day sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Now for those who are unfamiliar with the game, Raid Shadow Legends is a turn-based RPG where you collect these guys called champions, and you assemble them into a team to battle other players, to annihilate monsters bosses, and to collect loot by participating in challenges. You can play Raid right now on mobile or PC, and it's very easy to pick up. They have an awesome community of millions of active players online each month, ensuring that you have a great time playing Raid with others. And with their Discord server having over 100,000 people, it's very easy to ask for assistance when you need it. Raid has over 25 million downloads, over 250,000 clans, with nearly 2 billion PvP battles being fought. Oh, and get this, over 10 billion PvE battles have been fought. Now that's just insane! Along with having an active Reddit and Twitter communities, and having around 1,000 YouTube videos posted a week on YouTube just about Raid, featuring guides, strategies, and materials to help you progress through the game and your champion, it's easy to become a legend in Raid Shadow Legends. You see what I did there? A month ago, Raid released their biggest update ever, that being the Doom Tower. It has 120 floors, a bunch of secret challenge rooms, and 12 bosses to battle, which sounds awesome. Now, the sheer size of the community alone is why you have to check out Raid. And if you haven't, for new players for a limited time only, can get a huge head start in Raid. All you have to do is click the link in the description below, and you'll get an XP booster, 50 gems, some energy refills, an ancient shard, and a cherry on top, a free champion called Bowar, who has some resemblance to the Icon Knights. You will find extra rewards in your inbox for the next 30 days only, so do not miss out. And I want to say thank you to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. Now for those of you who don't quite remember who the Dinobots were, here's a quick recap on them. The Dinobots are legendary warriors, created by the mad goddess Quintessa. Eventually they would get cut off within the Autobot Decepticon Civil War, fighting alongside the Autobots until the war was over, where all the members split and went their separate ways, until Lockdown would eventually bring them back all together in his quest to capture all the knights. They'd be trapped in their cells until Optimus freed them, since he needed their help in stopping Galvatron's army. Grimlock, who was the leader of the Dinobots, did not want to take orders from Prime, and thus challenged him in a duel for leadership, where he would eventually be beat. Seeing that Optimus was the victor, he submitted and the other Dinobots helped defeat Galvatron's army of KSI drones. At the end of the film, Optimus discharged them, telling them they were free. And with that, the Dinobots ran into the Hong Kong forest, after giving the Autobots a warm farewell. But when the last night comes around, things get a little bit tricky, since only Grimlock and Slug were at the junkyard of Cade, with Scorn and Strafe being nowhere to be seen. So now the question is what happened to Scorn and Strafe, and why is Grimlock and Slug at the junkyard? Well, to start off, we first need to understand where exactly the Dinobots went, and for how long they stayed in that location, since soon after Age of Extinction, Cade Yeager goes on the run, and sets up shop at his junkyard base, which is a safe haven for Transformers hiding from the TRF. I speculate that the Dinobots settled down and made a camp, somewhere in Hong Kong's massive forest, where they would stay until they were hunted down. Let me explain. You see, sometime after Age of Extinction, endless waves of Transformers started to arrive on Earth. The vast majority of the world's governments, fearing more of the devastation had already occurred in the past, agreed that all Transformers should be considered illegal. To this end, they funded the Transformers Reaction Force to contain the threat of Transformers around the world. With that said, I'm pretty sure the Chinese government did not want to have 80-foot robotic dinosaurs roaming around the Hong Kong forest and sent in a TRF to get rid of them. If you remember, this is not the first time the Chinese government has done something like this. Since in 2009, they ratted out Demolisher to Nest, where he would be neutralized. China's cover story in this one is toxic spill. We gotta make sure this one does not get out in the public eye, so keep it tight. With that said, the TRF were sent in to get rid of the Dinobots. Knowing the threat that laid ahead of them, thanks to the footage of the Dinobots being supplied to them by the Chinese government, the TRF geared up with the best weapons in their arsenal to take down the Dinobots. Amongst the weapons were combat drones, F-22 Raptors, and sentries, which would be ideal to combat the Dinobots in a thick jungle environment, along with ground troops to haul the Dinobots away once they were dealt with. You see, the TRF went in with the intention to kill, instead of capture, since like with Demolisher years prior, the Chinese government wanted them dead. The TRF would have the advantage, since the Dinobots only had handheld weapons, meaning the Raptors could deal significant damage to them, without any way for the Dinobots to fight back. Now since we never see Strafe and Scorn again, and due to the fact that it's extremely odd for them not to be the Junkyard of Cade, it's likely they were killed in this battle. I can back this claim up since if you remember when the Dinobots needed to buy the Autobots some time by intercepting the TRF, only Grimlock and Slug appeared. It would have made sense for the whole crew to show up. Now you could make the argument that Scorn and Strafe stayed behind at the Junkyard to protect the baby Dinobots from the Decepticons, but here's where I have to disagree. Megatron and his crew would be annihilated if Scorn and Strafe attacked them, proven by the fact that they ripped through the KSI drones like cotton candy. And even in the case 
case if Megatron and his crew somehow overpowered the Dinobots, they would have been bragging about the incident at the abandoned town, and would put up a hell of a better fight against Bumblebee and his Autobots, since the Dinobots are way stronger than them. So it wouldn't make sense for Megatron and his crew to be able to beat the Dinobots, but not Bumblebee's squad. Another reason why Scorn and Strafe were likely killed by the TRF is because Grimlock and Slug don't hesitate outright kill the TRF soldiers. Grimlock causes the cars to flip over, while Slug finishes the job by destroying them with the occupants inside. There would have to be a reason for them to outright kill the TRF, instead of just blocking their path, since the plan was to stall and not kill. Usually Autobots don't kill humans unless there's no other option at hand. For example, Prime had to kill Harold Antinger, since if he didn't, Cade would have been killed. You could make the argument that Grimlock underestimated his shot, causing the TRF cars to roll over, but for Slug to come in and finish a job like that, the intent was always a kill, even though they clearly could have stalled and blocked their path. So the reason why I think they outright killed the TRF was because of the deaths of Scorn and Strafe, which in all honesty makes the most amount of sense. And before I get into why Slug disappeared after this shot, I want to dive into how Scorn and Strafe got killed. I would say that the most likely scenario would be that the Dinobots were surprise attacked by F-22 Raptors, with the drones and sentries following suit. Strafe would transform to take out some of the F-22s, but would eventually be overpowered and shot down. And this would not be the first time Strafe was shot down, since in Age of Extinction, one Decepticon fighter was able to bring him down. And with that said, it's likely Strafe would get shot down by the TRF. And after he crashed, part of the TRF would target his body to make sure he was neutralized. Seeing that they were fighting a losing battle, with no way to stop the gunfire, Grimlock told the Dinobots to retreat. Slug would follow the orders, but Scorn resisted, not wanting to leave Strafe behind, transforming into a Spinosaurus, facing the TRF head on like a true warrior, until he would eventually be overpowered and be neutralized. Scorn gave Grimlock and Slug enough time to get out of sight from the TRF. The two agreed to go into hiding, where they would start the tunnel underground. Eventually, they would somehow meet up with the Autobots, where they would be taken to Kay's junkyard, where they could hide. Now, with the Dinobots being able to tunnel as a surprise to you, it was an ability that the Dinobots could do in the last night, with Grimlock showing it off on screen. Now, though how they could do this was never explained, Kate says that Grimlock has a hole, which implies that Grimlock dug it himself. You get back in your hole and think about what you did! With that said, let's move back on to what happened to Grimlock and Slug after their encounter with the TRF. And it doesn't look bright for Slug, since after the shot he's never seen again. While on the contrary, Grimlock joins a town battle to help fight Megatron's crew. So what happened to Slug? Well, the most likely answer is that he was killed since he does not reappear after this shot. Evidence that points to this is the fact that after the TRF was attacked, they dropped their pursuit of the Autobots and sent all their drones towards the destruction that Dinobots caused. Jaeger's got vital intel, detain only. TRF operations, stay out of my way. Those were my men. This can be further proven because they had the bulk of their arsenal at the ready to make sure Jaeger was captured. Air's gonna be on station. We're gonna have all EOIR sensors on these guys as they move. Flight, push tactical and airborne. I want air ops locking down this transport Decepticons in sight 100%. And yet we did not see this arsenal of Jets and Ospreys during or after the town fight, meaning they were used to combat Grimlock and Slug. We can infer that a hell of a fight went down, since none of those forces made to the town battle to detain Cade. Only a few drones, but no F-22s or Ospreys. With that said, since Grim is still alive, he retreated after Slug was killed, proven by the fact that he joined the town battle and Slug was nowhere to be seen. And in the last scene that we see Grimlock in, he seems to be lost, just walking mindlessly around a junkyard. He doesn't even join the final battle, even though the night ship could easily carry him, proven by the fact that he was imprisoned there by lockdown. I would have to say the reason why he did not join was because, well, he was depressed. His team, his closest friends, were now all dead. For him to be the last remaining Dinobot in the universe, it's a sad thought. And with that in mind, it makes sense why he decided not to join the final battle. And just like that, that's what happened to the Dinobots. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you haven't already, check out the Fixing Transformers playlist for some more awesome theories. But before I go, I want to say thank you to all my Patreons and channel members for supporting the channel. It means a lot and keeps my channel running, so big fat thank you to you. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please give a like rain because it helped the channel a lot. With that said, hit that outro. Thank you.